Mary had a little.
Let me try that again with the, the microphone on the whole time. That was my bad, Carol, not yours. <laughs> welcome, Central Church. Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. Yeah, I'm kind of not with it today. My back is having a spasm, and it's not good. And so I, I hope not to coast on that the whole morning. But, you know, if anything goes wrong, if I do anything silly, it's my back's fault. <laughs> I'm Pastor Michelle. Delighted to welcome you to this time of worship together, whether you are here in this sanctuary or are joining on our live stream and YouTube. I seem to have a wire problem on my pack. Um, if you are in the sanctuary, we continue to mask to your comfort, comfort level as Broome County is down at a medium COVID uh, transmission level, so we appreciate that. Um, be safe, be careful, and take care of other people is all we ask. If you are um, sitting near the brown pad in the pew, they usually toward the center. If you could find that and pass it down, and if everybody could sign your name and contact information in there, that would be very, very helpful. That is our contact tracing method. Um, it's also a way for you to get to know who's sitting next to you in your pew. If you happen to test positive this week for COVID, please call the office immediately, as soon as you can, so that we can notify the folks who are sitting around you that there's been a possible exposure. So I invite you to do all that. If you are joining on the, U on the YouTube live stream or on cable TV later this week, um, I invite you to go to the front page of our website where you can click and download our bulletin, our order of service this week. It has not only what we're doing in this time of worship, but events and things to remember for the coming week are in that as well. So that is available for you. This is also a communion Sunday. So if you are participating in worship at home, I invite you at some point, pretty soon, to find yourself something to drink and something to eat, something bread-like and something juice-like, perhaps. Um, though folks have come up with all sorts of interesting combinations. But you are able to participate in communion at home as we, in this room, do. We'll do that together. So we are here to worship together. The people of God gathered to give God praise and thanks. The people of God gathered to walk with each other on our spiritual journey. The people of God come to celebrate and praise. Welcome to worship. Good morning. My name is Tom Hall. I'll be serving as your liturgist today, and any mistakes I make will also be blamed on Michelle's back. <laughs> Reading scripture today will be uh, Tyler Wolford, and we have special music today from Sean Stafford, Roger Richards, and the Capella Ringers. The tech team is back in the booth to uh, address all those needs and make it happen for those that are not here presently in the, in the sanctuary. And Keith Wilcox is our lead usher back there, so if you need anything during the service, uh, wave to Keith and he'll be able to help you out. Uh, there's some great folks keeping eyes on the chat, and you'll be invited later to add your thoughts and prayer requests to that, that chat. Uh, make sure you're logged on to the YouTube channel and be aware that the comments are public, so be careful what you post there, and, and uh, greatly so. We are gathered to worship together today in many rooms and spaces, and we celebrate God's presence with us wherever we are, and the opportunity this week to enter more fully into the story of Jesus. We begin our worship by praying together. Please join me in the words that are printed on the screen. Let us pray. Holy One, we admit that we have asked for your righteous judgment against others without acknowledging our own failings. We admit that our words and actions don't always match. We pray for you to end suffering in our world without practicing compassion and generosity towards others in our own lives. Our religion has become a source of quarreling rather than a testimony to your grace. Grant us peace of spirit and give us integrity of heart that we may be the people of grace you have created us to be. Amen. Our first uh, hymn this morning will be found in the black hymnal in the pew. It's number 2236, Gather Us In. Let us stand as we are comfortable and able.
The people of Christ, during the worship of God, are called to bring peace and to be the people of Christ's peace. We're invited every time we worship to offer that peace to each other and to the world. And so whether you are in this room or at home, I invite you, you can use American Sign Language for peace, and that would be to put your right hand on top of your left with your palms together, turn it over and bring your arms back to your sides, and then put your hands close to your body, knuckles together, thumbs on top, and extend that from your body. And that is peace I give to you. So exchange that form of peace or another shorthand you might like with each other in this room. And if you are at home, I invite you to share that with each other. If you are watching solo today, your dog and cat can use peace. The budgie can use peace. If nobody else is there, go to your front door and put that peace out into the neighborhood. morning comes from Isaiah 58. Tyler's going to read that for us in just a moment. This is the last portion of, in the last portion of the book of Isaiah, written by someone we call third Isaiah in the scholarly world. Um, Three authors, probably, of this book, and so this is the third one, Preaching Hope. Shout! A full-throated shout! 
Hold nothing back. A trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob, with their sins. There's busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right-living people, law-abiding, God-honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And I love and love having me on their side. But they also complain, why do we fast and, and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A, A day to show off humility? To put on a pious, long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A fast day that I, God, would like? This is the kind of fast day that I am after. To break the chains of injustice. Get rid of exploitation. Free the oppressed. Cancel debts. What I'm interested in is seeing you do is this. Sharing your food with the hungry. Inviting the homeless into your homes. Putting clothes on the shivering, ill-clad. Being available to your own families. Do this, and the lights will turn on. And your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then, when you pray, God will answer. I'll call, you'll call out for help, and I'll say, here I am. If you get rid of your unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about each other's sins, if you are gracious with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of the past lives to build a new, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything. Restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. Almost don't have to preach when Tyler reads scripture. That's a feast. So, what does it mean to have faith and to love God? How much do we think about that on an any given day? For some, having faith, loving God, means going to the church their parents go to or went to or the church they've chopped around very carefully to find. For some, it means subscribing to a certain set of beliefs that are integral, integral to their faith tradition. Call it doctrine or dogma or catechism or creed, if you like. Having faith for these folks means being able to say, I believe this or I believe that. For some, others, having faith and loving God means fasting and prayer and contemplation and silence. For others, it's all about action and serving. For some, it is acts of mercy And for others, it is acts of justice. We all get to our core beliefs and we all act out our own faith in different ways. And I think the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with that. We're not one-size-fits-all people. 
And God calls us as we can hear and as we can follow. The Spirit is dynamic that way, nudging us, pulling us, poking us, prodding us to share our gifts and to serve the world. So what is this passage all about? I said that the third Isaiah was cheerful and about hope. But God is telling the prophet to scold people who are fasting and praying who are observing their faith in that way. This is a passage where God sounds mighty annoyed with God's people. But they're praying. They're fasting. Most everyday Christians don't fast too much or too often. That's a spiritual discipline. And God's people are doing it. So why is God annoyed at them? God actually says their praying and fasting aren't good enough. God's calling their practices of faith sinful. Ouch. That Hebrew word there for sin, sinful is what the Greeks would later translate as hamartia, which means um, missing the mark. The English translators would turn that word into sin. Hamartia, that word, that concept is about missing the target. It's a term from archery that we see all through the New Testament. We get it in our heads what we think God might want, but how often does that end up looking like our own assumptions or wants or the assumptions of those who tell us what God wants? How often do we consciously or not say, to ourselves, well, this is what I would want if I was God. We get it in our heads that there's a one-size-fits-all path to God, and, and if we and everybody else are not on it, we are headed straight to hell. What's that old saying? When everybody, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail? This whole passage is God being annoyed at the people who seem to forget their primary everyday prayer. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. All of it. That's why God's annoyed here. It's not the nature of the people's faith practice that God is angry with. It's the incompleteness of it. You fast, says God, but you bicker. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. I love Peterson's rendition of that in that passage. Your humility is only for show and for recognition. This is God saying, quit doing what you're doing out of habit. Quit doing what you're doing because you assume I want you to do it this way. Quit doing what you're doing because somebody else told you to do it this way. Quit doing it just to check things off a list. That's not what I want. This is what I really want. I want humility and not hubris. I want your service, not your selfishness. I want your action, not your apathy. I want your heart, not your habits. I want the kind of sacrifice that costs you something of your heart and soul, not the kind of sacrifice that you check off a list and consider it done. The prophet Micah would later say that along with walking humbly with God, we must do justice. The author of the letter of James in the New Testament would say say it this way, faith without works is dead. John Wesley, who founded Methodism, would say there's no personal holiness without social holiness. God is after wholeness, unity of faith and action. God is after completeness. So yes, pray. By all means, pray. Yes, fast. Deny something for a time or forever. Yes, keep up with spiritual disciplines like that not for discipline's sake, not for the attention you might get, 
not because it's something you're supposed to do, but for the way that those disciplines offer God a chance to reach you and restore you and call you into deeper and more abundant life. Observe the disciplines because they provide a way to grow into a relationship with God. That that relationship is the object because through it we begin to see ourselves as we really are and as we really can be. We begin to see other people really see other people as God sees them. We begin to see the wrong in the world and discover a yearning to end it. We begin to reach outside ourselves and our own concerns to be the hands and the feet of love. That's what God wants. For us to be awake enough and whole and strong enough in our own faith to do all of those things that Isaiah lists to break the chains of injustice, get rid of exploitation, free the oppressed, cancel debts, share your food with the hungry, invite the homeless poor into your homes, put clothes on the shivering ill-clad, be available to your own families, get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins, be generous with the hungry and give yourselves to the down and out. That's a long list. not to check the righteousness list and con, you know, consider our duties of faith fulfilled, but to be the living, breathing presence of God in this world, empowered by love and equipped by grace. Our faith was never meant to be a passive thing. It's not an object. It's not a noun. It's a way of life that goes beyond belief and lived into a lived experience. Faith is what some would say is a meeting of orthodoxy, which means right thinking, and orthopraxy, which means right practice. Whatever your belief system about God, it is, if it is simply something you hold on to and maybe pull out into the light now and then to ponder it a little bit, or something to keep to yourself while not letting it change you from the inside out, that faith is not complete. It might be a mile wide, but it's only an inch deep. Our faith calls us into the world with courage and strength to deal with the problems in the world head on. Faith is never about not getting involved. There are plenty of folks who would love faith to be all about not getting involved. God doesn't say, pray for the bonds of injustice to be loosed. God says, break the bonds of injustice. There's a difference. Every one of God's commands in Isaiah's list is in the active voice. Don't pray that someone else gets it done. Get it done. Or as Yoda once said, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. That was for you, Tyler. The non-fictional Cecil Williams, former pastor at Glide Memorial United Methodist Church in San Francisco, says that when he asked God why God didn't fix homelessness or bigotry or the troubles of the world, God said, that's why I put you there. There's a story about a pastor who was once confronted by a furious parent in the congregation who was deeply disturbed that his daughter was determined to get involved in international mission work and she was packing up to leave home when she should be going to college. She should be getting trained for a career And he blamed the pastor, of course. You're the one who taught her this. 
You're the one who told her it was okay to leave her family for this. You're the one who encouraged her to throw away her potential and the chance for a steady career. And by the way, good money. The pastor said, you're the one who brought her to church. (laughs) Deepening our faith is about growing in relationship with God. It also means being open to any possibility. That's good news. Thanks be to God for it. Amen. As we begin to enter a time of prayer, and lead us in music, we invite you to offer your prayer request on the live stream chat. And tell us uh, where you've seen God this week and uh, any other prayers you may be uh, mindful of or in need of. Uh, Remember, again, that the post is public and that uh, we may not be announcing everything that comes across in the comments, but please feel free to offer them up.
Thank you, Sean and Roger. The uh, keyboard section of the Capella Ringers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen to your bulletin or the uh, 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 people from our congregation that we've listed and, as part of our prayer program. And I call those out to you uh, this, at this time. Charles Brinser, Spencer Alonghi, David Daniels, Melissa and Joe Fiore, Eric Hossman, Day Young and Kay Young, Dennis Madison, Janet Pickering, Dirk and Kathy Sorber, Dennis Wilbur, and people that we know that need additional prayers this week include Carol Marino, Margaret Frederick, Richard Frederick, Cindy Tedeschi, Carla Wood, Pam Russell, Noreen Beyer, Randy Foote, Tom Bergaud, and Heather Warden. A couple of updates on those. Um, Sharon says that her brother, Tom Bergode, will be having surgery on Tuesday this week, all things being equal and going well. So we're good for that. He's been waiting um, as he recovers from a stroke on top of the heart stuff he was having surgery for. So Sharon's relieved, the family's relieved, and we are too. Um, we are keeping in prayer, um, as always, the folks who are being hurt, displaced, uh, left out, left behind by war in their countries. Um, we are praying for folks in California, particularly with the, the excess of water. We are pay, praying for so, so many people across this world who are just suffering from poverty, from lack of shelter, lack of food, lack of care. But we also celebrate. We have things to celebrate. And I am wondering where you have seen God at work in your world this week. Um, Barb Parcells has just said on the chat that she saw God in the bus drivers who were stopping along the way to pick up kids as they were walking to school um, in that cold, 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 cold on Friday. Where have you seen God at work? Yeah, of course. Yes. So um, if, if you haven't read the stories, Horace is lifting up um, this congregation downtown. What's the first UC? It's the UCC church. Oh, First Press. Okay. Downtown Binghamton, who are um, changing around a whole section of their church to take in folks as a warming shelter um, and safety shelter crisis. So we celebrate that with them. But that is God at work, isn't it? They actually, my friends, got rid of two pianos to do this. A church, I know, right? There's a book called uh, Sacred Cows Make Gourmet Hamburgers. We celebrate God at work in so many ways there. Where else have you seen God at work in your world this week? Yeah, Sheila. The beautiful music here today. Oh, the beautiful music, of course. Beautiful music today. Where else have you seen God working? Yeah, Maggie. I, ha I have to say I was kind of worried yesterday because we went from a swim meet to lunch to uh, picking out wedding <laughs> and well, oh, the, the other, but um, having a 12-year-old who didn't know, but she did really well. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't even know how to paraphrase that. Unexpected fun with a preteen along on a multiple errands, varied activity kind of day. We see God. Yeah, I was there. We see God in that. Where else do you see God at work? So self-control and empathy with the other people in your other kids in your classroom, um, supporting a, a student with some. Oh, wonderful! Kids come through in a clinch. They do. They're amazing. Well, I invite us to be in prayer together. 
take a breath in and out. Just settle in your space. Open yourself to the presence of God in this moment. Let the silence wrap you. Holy and living God, there is so much wrong with our world. There is so much wrong with people. Most of us, at least once in a day, offer this what's wrong with you? Exclamation. We are frustrated at the seeming impossibility of making the world right again. We are frustrated by people who have forgotten civility, the common good, the commandment to love each other. We are frustrated that we can't solve all the world's problems ourselves. But Holy One, you are there with us even in those frustrations, even in those times where we crave solutions. You are with us, comforting, holding, strengthening, and empowering us to be the change makers and the peace bringers, and the love givers. We come to you hungry for relationship with you, hungry for, for the power to live in grace all the time, hungry for the courage to stand up when we know we should, to speak up when we know we should, to do when we just want to watch. Fill us with passion for your love and your work. Help us to see with your eyes all those around us. Help us to love with your heart. Help us to yearn for a deeper relationship with you that, that we might be able to do all things when you strengthen us. We pray this morning for so much, for help in times of war, for faith in times of fear, for strength in times of weakness, for healing in times of illness. We've named some already who need those kinds of help, but, but we carry more in our hearts, family and friends who need healing and hope and strengthening just, just as you offer. And so in this moment, in this silence, in this community of faith, we lift them to you as we speak their names aloud. You know each one, you know each need, each hope, each dream. Yet we ask it anyway, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask them in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we move from that time of prayer and relationship with God into a sacramental time, a sacred moment of prayer and community and communion. In the United Methodist Church, this table is open to everybody. No questions. 
no qualifications, no prerequisites. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to be Methodist. You don't have to have been a saint this week. Thank goodness. You don't have to have completed some course to get here. This table is God's table, and God invites you. Our elements are grape juice and gluten-free bread, so all of it is, is celiac safe and recovery safe. Ordinary things, but it's an extraordinary meal. If you find that you cannot come forward to receive communion, um, somebody in the back, I am, have every confidence, um, will grab the kit and bring you a cup and a piece of bread. If you are coming forward for communion, I invite you to come by the front aisle, I mean the front aisle, the center aisle, to come forward, receive these elements, and if you would like to kneel at the rail for prayer, um, you certainly may, and stay as long as you wish. If you would like to just receive them standing wherever you are, that's fine. Please do, but return the little cup onto the orange trays at the side of the front up here. If you are at home and have not yet gotten your bread-like substance and your juice-like substance, I invite you to do that because now is the time and I will guide you through that as we go. We will sing the sung responses. They're up on the screen, but they're also in the little black book at 2235-ish, two. Yeah, it's in there somewhere toward the back, but they're on the screen. Right. And so we begin. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, Almighty God, for you made us. And before us, you made the world we inhabit. And before the world, you made the eternal home in which we have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain, have their origin in you. All that is lovely and all who are loving point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know and for the universe beyond our understanding, we particularly praise you, whom eternity cannot contain, for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus all that is spectacular, all that is plain, have their origin in you. All that is lovely and all who are loving point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know and for the universe beyond our understanding, we particularly praise you whom eternity cannot contain for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus for his life which informs our living, for his compassion which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking which contradicts our harmless generalities, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness. We praise and worship you and give you our eternal thanks. And here too our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit who even yet, even now, confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. Therefore, we gladly join our voices to the song of the church, with its prophets and apostles, with the weak and the willing, with the sinners and the saints, with all your people on earth and all the host of heaven. We praise your name and join the unending hymn.
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words were not enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving which you alone can offer. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command rooted in an experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night before he died and as they were at a meal together, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. That was ordinary, nothing special. But then he told them when he shared it with them, this bread is my body. It is broken for you. Take and eat and remember. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it, nothing unusual. And before he passed it around to those at the table with him, he said, this cup is the new covenant with God. This is the new relationship with God. This is possible through love and sacrifice. This is my blood poured out for you. Take and drink, and every time you do, remember and remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take the cup, we take the bread, the produce of the earth, the fruit of human labor, because in these ordinary things, Jesus has promised to be present. Through this meal, Christ has promised to make us whole. And so, all of Almighty God, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to bless this bread and this cup and to fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us wherever we are, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. The one whom the universe could not contain is present to us now in this bread. The one who calls each one of us by name, no matter who we are, where we are, meets us in this cup. The table is set, the meal is ready. Come and taste and see that God is good. If you are at home, feel free to take those elements anytime you like for yourself. If you are coming in the sanctuary, if you come up the aisle, I will give you a piece of bread with some tongs, and Tom will um, hold this out for you. You can have him get the cup for you, or you can take your cup yourself, whichever you prefer.
Shall we pray? Shall we pray? That's actually the first verse of the next hymn. I'll just pray. You all pray along with me about that. God of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the way to you. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Amen. At this special time, we offer ourselves and our resources to God's purpose as a response of our gratitude for God. There are many ways to respond to God's work in our lives, including our financial resources and our labors. Please consider how you'll continue your offerings and pledges to the work of the church and how you can give here in the sanctuary in the offering boxes or through our website or by direct deposit. With that, let us pray. Gracious God, a new day is before us, and we thank you for all the promise that it brings. We praise you for the blessings we share and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. May these gifts we offer this morning magnify his light and life for all to see, here at Central and throughout the world. May we walk as witnesses to his grace, love, and mercy. Gracious God, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask for your continued blessings on all who gather in your name, give in whatever form, and receive for whatever need. Amen. Announcements. Uh, the ones I would point to in the bulletin that are near term, I would ask you to keep in mind the, your, any participation you could offer into the Super Sunday next uh, Sunday. Oh, I think Paul's going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Well, and with that, I'd like Paul to come forward to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is next Sunday? Paul? Super Bowl. Go Bill. <laughs> I know, Paul. Paul. I grew up in Buffalo, so I am a diehard Bills fan. We need you on the mic so the internet can hear you. Anyway. It's not on. <laughs> How about you stand back at this one right here? I'm moving in here, Carol. You can keep up. I know you. Here I am. <laughs> here I am, Lord. Right. Uh, so next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, we're spelling Super Bowl S O U P E R. Get it? Get it? Su <sighs> you're, you're, this, is a, this is the fast group. Uh, so uh, the worship, uh, sorry, the uh, missions council uh, and the. Fellowship. Fellowship Council yep. got together and are, and are participating in something that we're calling Super Sunday. And the idea is for you to, if you'd like to support us, grab a grocery bag. There's some right on the top of the tech booth and there's some on the pew going out to the right. Um, grab a grocery bag and bring it back next week with soup, cans of soup. Uh, they are going to support uh, the Shepherd's Supper downstairs and also chow. Um, Lots of people give lots of food around Thanksgiving time and around Christmas time, and then the drop-off continue or starts to happen, um, and people forget that people are hungry, especially when it's like two degrees outside. They need something warm, and so this is our way of helping supplement that. So if you'd like to participate, please grab a bag. Uh, I can answer questions if you have any. I don't know too much, but I can answer questions that you may have, uh, or just ask around and people will know the answers. Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Um, that initiative and other events in the life of Central are printed in the bulletin or on in the calendar, uh, which is available on the website. If you have any questions regarding any of these events, uh, please contact the church office and they'll direct you to where you can get more information. I'd like to direct your attention to some upcoming things. Um, we're having a radio show again, old-timey radio show, radio theater here, I believe, in the sanctuary, maybe downstairs. We'll figure that out. That's on February 19th, um, the weekend before Lent begins. We're going to have a Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper sponsored by the Education Council. That's February 21st, that Tuesday in many ways. And um, you'll be able to come and have, uh, pick up a pancake dinner to go. 
Ash Wednesday begins, is on February 22nd. That begins the season of Lent, and we will have a service at 7 o'clock that evening, so get those in your calendar. And I'm, I'm reading those to get to this one. Um, you may or may not have heard, but you're hearing today that uh, First United Methodist Church um, is closing as a congregation, um, which is the end of a very long and proud history. And their closing service is at 2 p.m. on Sunday, February 26th. And we've got it on the calendar here so that we can remind you, if you'd like to be in solidarity and support with the folks in that congregation as they have this very, very difficult last service together, um, we are welcome and invited, and I hope you mark your calendars. Uh, these brothers and sisters have made some hard decisions, and nobody likes it when their church closes. So if you want to be present at that, I'm sure they would love the moral support and physical energy you bring. But that's all. We have a takeout luncheon coming up. You can see that too. Okay. Uh, we'll, uh, our last uh, hymn this morning is uh, number 581. Uh, Lord, whose love through humble service, uh, please rise as you're comfortable and able to do so. As you go into this day and into this week and into this world, 
May your faith grow ever deeper, every hour. May you be the people of God in word and thought and deed. And may the peace of the Christ go with you as you do. Amen.